move on to a different test that uses the chi-square distribution. So we'd like to determine if two factors are independent or not. So we'd like to understand what does independent even mean? So what this means, independent means, is that the, the two factors do not affect one another. That's a, there's an intuition behind it. There's very rigorous mathematical ways of describing two things being independent. But we'll see some examples to build some intuition. The number of pounds of red meat eaten and a person's cholesterol levels. Do we think these are independent? So these two factors, if we were to measure this on a person, do we think that these are independent or not? So here, we're, if they are independent, that means that these two do not affect one another. But in this case, we probably think that these two factors are dependent. So this would be an example where two factors are probably dependent. On the other hand, this example, height of an adult and the number of plants an adult has, do one of these affect one another? Well, I don't think so, right? It's not like tall people own more house plants than another one, than short people do. So this one would be an example where they are independent. There's basically nothing going on between these two. Nothing's causing another one. Nothing's affecting one another. So when we do some type of test of independence, we're asking that there's going to be some type of table that I'll give you where we'll have a bunch of data summarized of these people with two factors. So we'll group them into categories and say, okay, are these two factors going to be independent of each other or not? So the test statistic, it's going to be written like this. So this is a, a different style of computer test statistic. At this point, the test statistics that we did back um, – with the normal distributions and t-distributions, all of those are related to z-scores, or t, I guess t-scores, which are like z-scores. But this is going to be very different. Here we're going to add up the sum. The sigma notation means we take the sum. We're going to add up all of these what are called cells. We'll see an example uh, with some word problems where we'll see this. But we're going to take the observed minus the expected. We're going to square that, and we'll divide that by e. And e, this is the expected. So we're saying that if these two are going to be independent of each other, what would we expect to have happened? But we observe something and see, okay, what's the difference between that? So the bigger this is, the, law, the bigger their difference is between the observed and the expected, then the larger this is going to be. The larger a test statistic is, that means the more likely that is that we're going to reject the null hypothesis, that there's going to be something going on here. So large values correspond to those being very different. So our hypotheses for this test of independence, the null hypothesis says the factors are independent. Now, we'll actually tie in what are we talking about with the factors in the context of the problem. We'll describe that. Maybe we'll say the here the, the number of pounds of red meat is independent of cholesterol levels. That would be an example of the null hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis would say that the number of pounds of red meat is dependent on the cholesterol levels, or I would maybe probably say the cholesterol levels are dependent on the number of pounds of red meat. But we're saying that the factors are independent means there's no association between those. Dependent, there is some association. And this will always be a right tail chi-square test. This is always going to be something positive. So we're always going to be to the right. The degrees of freedom is the number of columns minus one times the number of rows minus one. So what we're imagining in this situation is if we have our chi-square distribution, if we're way out here, this p-value is going to be small. That's a very large number. That means that the observed minus the expected must have been very big. So there's something going on here when this is way out there. So right tail test, we're always going to be finding the p-value out to the right. So this is just hopefully some, some good information before we look at some examples with the test of independence.